Fire. <laughs> in case you weren't here, uh, he's the developer of Cydia, which is the alternative to the App Store for jailbroken iPhones. And he's the creator of Script, which is a runtime introspective debugging REPL, which is uh, a hybrid of Objective-C and JavaScript. Jay Freeman. Can you hear me now? My God, that was loud, actually. <sighs> Do you talk softer? OK, so um, yes, my talk actually didn't even have a title listed until yesterday. I um, had, there were like a couple different talks that uh, maybe I would be doing, and uh, there were some coordination issues getting, getting that all uh, figured out. Um, but uh, with the, I didn't even understand, it was like with the short amount of time that I have, and then with some of the uh, things that uh, Apple announced at WBDC, uh, I clearly know what I'm going to be doing about what I'm talking about today. So um, actually, I need to. Uh, send script.dev to That worked, good. Okay, so what I do is, um, what we, well I do a lot of things as she, as she described. The thing that um, I often end up doing demos of at conferences is this thing called script. Uh, so script is a JavaScript console. Um, so just like, uh, you know, I can say function return three, four, r, y is equal to that. Um, it's, um, it has syntax highlighting, it has tab completion, uh, and most importantly, it has a bridge to Objective-C. So if I say uh, NS object, I can allocate an NS object. Uh, I can send it things, this is going to return the exact same thing I just had, send things like description. Um, I can use Objective-C syntax for constructing things like arrays. I can then use the uh, syntax um, from JavaScript in order to uh, manipulate these arrays. Um, or, so this actually, I had an Objective-C array that contained five, four and five. I just sliced it into a JavaScript array that contained an Objective-C four. Um, now I can send that JavaScript array uh, object at index zero as, a Objective -C, as an Objective-C uh, method, and I get back the four. Um, so I, I've kind of blurred the object models between Objective-C and JavaScript. So my experience then, um, while watching the WBDC keynote, um, as i uh, doing all this, is, uh, whoa, they just added a injecting console to apps, and uh, uh, that was like one of my number one features that I like showing people. Uh, <laughs> so the thing I very quickly noticed, though, is, is that the, um, using, using Swift, um, they don't have very good tab completion on anything, and so you're trying to introspect into things. It's very difficult to actually utilize it. And so by the way, yes, I just mentioned something about Swift. Why am I allowed to mention something about Swift? I actually have this little preview thing up that specifically states, in this new agreement, you will not be bound by the four doing confidentiality terms um, if your technical information about pre-release Apple software and services disclosed um, at WBDC. I can't show you uh, the actual tools. I cannot show you um, screenshots or, uh, or, or give you my opinions on whether I, I like it's, it's uh, really awesome or really horrible or anything. But I can totally tell you what it is uh, and how, how it affects me and how it affects you. Uh, and though, really great, they released an app, the WWDC app, which actually uses Swift inside of it. Uh, and that app is public. Anyone can download that app. You can't log into the app unless you have a developer account, but everyone has the app. Script allows me to introspect on said app, which means that I can actually now go and use Script on that app, and then we can start learning more about Swift and what it does, how it works, etc. I also have the WBDC app open right now in Hopper, which is a... Uh, uh, disassembler that you can get from the Mac App Store, um, and, uh, and I've annotated a few of the data structures that I'm going to be messing with. So this is my phone I've SSH'd into. I just installed the new version of script that uh, will cr hopefully crash less on uh, dealing with this thing. And one thing I really should have done before doing this is verify that this is actually, oh, thank God, okay. <laughs> I've been doing all these, I've been doing all these demo, all this testing and everything actually in a different environment and I actually had not thought to do this, that last final test. Okay, so, oh, stupid bug at the end, make it. Um, so Swift objects uh, actually come back to us as Objective-C objects. And we, I know this because I was like, okay, well what is the UI app object? UI app, I want to get the delegate and you get back this, this crazy type mangled name. Um, so uh, underscore T, T, C, 4, WBDC, 15, WBC app delegate. So there is a function called uh, Swift <sighs> demangle simple class. Uh, DL sim RTLD default. 
Emango class simple. It's actually, it's, there's a possibility that this is not actually, they didn't compile this into the, um, I, I rely on this function being inside of the, uh, inside of the app. And I guess this function isn't inside of this, uh, with this, with the name. It's in the app. I happen to know the name of the function, but I don't know the address of the function in memory. But what, it's, what it does is it's going to take the uh, WWDC and the WC app delegate, that's the namespace and the name of the class, and we would just, we would just be splitting it out. But um, the type mangling ends up being that uh, underscore T is just like with underscore Z for C++. Um, and then the C indicates it's a class. If it's a protocol, it's a P. I actually haven't paid enough time attention to get that t the T there yet. And then the uh, four is for the length of the string, 15th length of the string, and you get the namespace and the, uh, and the class name. All right. So one of the things that script lets you do is, is um, you can ask for fields of a class. So if I do UI app delegate and I do isa, I will get back the, uh, the class object from the thing. Um, but I can also just put a star in front of it and pull out the entire thing. And you'll notice this didn't actually work. Actually, my first experience doing this in script is that script, script entirely crashed and I was very unhappy. Uh, and the reason why is, is that if you look at the app controller field, if you look at the app controller field, I get this assertion that there is no encoding for it. So, Class get, get instance variable pass in this type uh, app controller. That returns that. I do IVAR get offset. I find out that it's 16 bytes into the object. I do IVAR get type encoding and I get back null. Which makes me very unhappy because that's how I can actually go into the object and figure out what it is. So what I spent now the last three days straight nearly doing, um, and five hours uh, um, until like three in the morning last night working on is, well, how do I actually get this type information out of this object? So, um, I'm just gonna put this down here and balance my computer up a little because I'm typing a lot. All right, so um, the address of this object. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get, okay, there's the address right there. I'm going to typecast this in script to a void double pointer and now, if I were to indirect this, this is going to be the uh, class is a, um, the super. So I had the object, I get the first value from it. This is going to be the crash. Uh, which one is that? I feel, uh, by the way, and I've not like planned out, like scripted out exactly uh, this demo. So what we're doing is we're like, ex we're like exploring here a little bit as I, uh, and the reason why, yeah, that's of course, because when I did this, I wasn't doing it on the 64-bit device. On the 64-bit device, you have to mask off a bunch of parts of the is a pointer if you want to be able to do what I just did. So the 64-bit um, runtime uh, uses some of the high bits and some of the low bits um, for the reference count of the object um, stored in line, which is why if I try to just use this as a class, it's going to fail. All right. Uh, and with a, I guess, good, I get to cheat because I can just use uh, app delegate to is a and get the class pointer, which to then do dot value, that gives me the class pointer. So let's do that, encode that as a void double pointer. And now I'm looking at the Objective-C class object. <laughs> okay, so this Objective-C class object is also going to have a funny as this, so I'm not going to try to interact that. If I go back one, however, so, so the Objective-C object is laid out in memory, and one, the Objective-C class object is laid out in memory. One word before that um, is something called the value witness table, which is a feature specific to, uh, to Swift. Um, the, if I go to before this, I will actually get a uh, function which is would I could use to deallocate this object. If I go forward, I'm going to get the normal Objective C data. So here is the uh, meta class of this class, the super class of the class, um, some cache information, um, and then I'm going to get the data table for the Objective C object. Um, the data table for the Objective C object with Swift it uses the low bits. So this bit one here um, indicates that it's a Swift object. Um, and so you can use that in order to figure out whether the object is Swift or not. Um, if I continue forward here, I'm going to go through, um, yeah, and <laughs> I'm gonna go through uh, four 32-bit um, numbers, um, which is what they're showing here as 64-bit um, as, uh, numbers because I'm in a 64-bit runtime. Um, and uh, I'm going to get the size of the class. I'm going to get um, a, flag, a couple flags. Uh, I'm going to get the size of this, this whole structure. Um, but the more important thing is the next one, which is number seven here. This function, sorry, this pointer here is a pointer to the um, nominal type descriptor. So the very first entry in the vtable slot, so the vtable is stored after the Objective-C metadata is the uh, nominal type descriptor. So if I now take this pointer here, um, code it to a void double pointer, um, 
and then go. The very first slot in there are some flags, which happen to be zero here. If I continue forward uh, a few of these. All right, I believe that is this first one here, which is the name. So if I add encode this to a character pointer, uh, this is a really weird thing in script, um, which I have not fixed yet. DLSIM, RTLD, default, I'm going to pull str dupe. I'm then going to add encode that to a function that returns a character pointer but takes a void pointer. And then I'm going to pass this value into it and I get the name of the class. <laughs> all right. So the, the challenge, however, is I, what I really want to know is I want to know where all these, where all these fields are. So I'm going to continue, for, uh, so continue forward into here and um, this one, this pointer here, um, which comes after all of those uh, data blocks, that's going to be, uh, there we go. Uh, actually, I guess I'm going to use my str dupe again. So if I str dupe on there, uh, not find str I didn't actually save my str dupe, there we go. I'm going to get the name of the field. So that this, this pointer is a pointer to a set of null terminated strings for each of the fields in the object. And I know that there's one field because this value here was one. And I'm actually, I've got a better demonstration of all this, but I really want to get to the demo to demonstrate that this actually all works in practice. Um, I've got, I've got, we'll be able to like look at this in the disassembler and it'll make a little more sense at that point. So, um, so I've got the, uh, um, so uh, right after this string, um, there would be another string. But we happen to know that this type, this class only has a single field. Um, so the, the name of the field is app controller. The next thing is, 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 particularly interesting um, because of the way it's used. So this is a function which returns the types of all of the fields. So um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to typecast it to uh, something that returns a void pointer. And then I'm going to call it. And I'm going to get back now a pointer to the field, field type table, um, which gets dynamically allocated and then cached. Um, now the field type table, I'm going to code that to a void double pointer uh, zero is going to contain a single pointer to a, uh, what is it called? It's called a type, it's, um, it's not the direct type metadata, the direct type metadata. And the direct type metadata is the, the same as when I said before that the Objective-C class object had that extra header and had extra stuff below it, the V table. That structure is the direct type metadata. Um, so now if I take this and I add encode that to a double pointer, this looks by, like one of these familiar um, weirdly encoded Objective-C uh, isas actually. And there are four bytes. Um, so we've got we are weirdly encoded Objective-C isa, we've got the um, cached information, we've got then the, um, the size of the class, the size of the table, and then we've got back to that nominal type descriptor, which we're then going to be able to do a void double pointer cast on uh, pulling null one, and then we're going to do our str dupe, and we're gonna find out that the super type, sorry, that the type of this uh, field is a WWDC, WBDC application coordinator. So now I know the um, name of the type, I know the, sorry, I know the name of the field, I know the type of the field, and the only thing I need now is to figure out the uh, offset of the field, and Objective-C gave that to me, but I don't want to have to rely on Objective-C because I want this to work for all Swift direct type information. So if we go back to the V table that we were decoding earlier, um, and we keep going, so that was here, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, no. 11, 12, 13, I don't know how far we're gonna have to go because there's a lot of functions that, uh, a lot of accessor functions, a lot of funny initializer functions. There we go. Um, at the end of the V table is, that's hopefully the next V table. At the end of the V table is the, um, uh, is a field offset table. Um, and so you can then, what you can do is you take the, you, we know the size of the whole structure because that was one of the fields. You, you skip from the top of the direct type metadata down to the end of the structure and then the end of the structure is where all of these fields are and then you can walk back by the number of fields which we got from the nominal type um, uh, information, 
nominal type descriptor, and then we can walk forward by the field index that we want, and now we know the offset of the field, the type of the field, and the name of the field, and I haven't implemented all this into script yet, but the goal is, is that uh, in the next week or two, you will be able to use uh, script in order to introspect on all of the running uh, Swift objects that are inside of a process just as easily as you currently can with um, Objective-C objects. Um, and with full tab completion, which is the thing that when I was sitting uh, in the console, it was like constantly, I just keep hitting tab and I keep being sad. Um, uh, and in fact, I have already added support for the, I mean, like I haven't actually, I haven't finished, um, I've already added the parser support for the uh, do something, uh, you know, for with, well, actually, with is going to do something weird right now, um, like with values. Oh, can I not compile this? I don't think this is actually the version. I don't think I compiled it. I just added this uh, out like this morning. Um, is the uh, syntax support for the uh, Swift um, message send syntax, and I'll get that all integrated so you'll be able to tab complete your way through the Swift syntax um, as easily as you currently can in script with the Objective C syntax. Okay, so go over and over to Hopper. So here we've got the Objective C class list, which is just a um, list of pointers to all of the Objective C class data. Uh, if I go here, I happen to know that the first one, um, which I've annotated here, is the uh, app delegate. So I mentioned that if we go backwards, we see value witness table, the deallocation function. And if we go forward, we have the normal Objective-C metadata, this, um, the is us superclass, um, the cache information, um, and then the data pointer, which I listed as data never used because that's what Apple calls it. Um, it's a, it, you're never supposed to directly use it. You're, you're supposed to call a function to get the value because it, it contains extra bits. Um, then we have the size of the uh, instance. We have um, the, uh, I, I only know this one's a three or a seven. We've got the metadata size. Uh, we've got this one's eight. Love eight. Uh, nominal type descriptor, V table, and then as I indicated at the end of the V table, we have um, the offsets. And I think I must have been looking at the wrong type when I got the OX10 in the actual on the device, but uh, um, we got the offsets at the end of this table. So I was maybe I was looking at the app controller, because of course I'm just dealing with a large number of void pointers, which is just a really bad way of doing a demo. Okay. So um, this, however, I actually figured this out more. Oh, it was. So like, like this, this actually, this disassembler is going to is going to fail as we go through some of this stuff. We're gonna have to do some math in order to fix it because I actually I figured this out not from analyzing this app and uh, and pulling some of this stuff out. Some of it I actually had to kind of figure out by running it and doing things in script. So, okay, if we go then through to the uh, um, not the data. Oh my god, I can't even get to that. There we go. Uh, what do I want to do? I wanted to go to the nominal type descriptor. Um, nominal type descriptor has the get field types function. The get field types function I had mentioned um, was, it, well, this is clearly not the get field types function, right? So um, all of these fields are accidentally offset by 4,000. So I went and I did a bunch of math um, due to the sad way that I uh, had to decode all of this. There we go. Uh, there. So here is the get type get field types function. The get field types function um, is going to look in the cache, but more importantly then it's going to um, load the type, which is this offset here, which is also wrong. So we do some more math. Uh, it was, no, wait, that one's right, this one's wrong. 2571D0 there. So we'll then switch to here. This is then the um, type information for the, the um, this is the uh, type, what was the name of it? The, uh, direct type metadata for the type of the field, and, and it's got the dialog function, it's got the um, value witness table, it's got the Objective-C metadata, um, it's got the ran field, it's got the nominal type descriptor. Um, nominal type descriptor then has the name, where the name is uh, offset wrong, so we take one E2DB0, we offset it to here, we go there, and we get WDC, WDC application coordinator. Okay, so clearly if anyone has then any Low-level questions about how Swift uh, works or is implemented. I uh, I might be able to actually answer some of them at this point. <laughs> actually, are you the I can't quite see in the audience. Are you the person? Yeah. So uh, I'm really glad that uh, Joe came. I tweeted yesterday saying like I'm hanging out in the uh, Marriott lobby working on all of this stuff. If anyone would like to come hang out, and and Joe spent like four hours with me sitting. Uh, we were staring at disassembly stuff. I I, I really really appreciate having company because otherwise I don't think I'd have had the motivation to actually uh, finish this last night. <laughs> so. Any questions? I think I've got like a few minutes at least. Yeah. People are raising their hands.
Hello. Um, not quite that low level of a question, but um, so do you happen to know if uh, Swift Swift uh, internally implements well, like method calls and, and and that sort of thing? Is it is it done in the same way as uh, so method I calls in Swift are implemented um, in a way very similar to C plus uh, plus. So C plus plus virtual um, virtualized objects have a virtual function table pointer as their first field, which then it gets used to look up the um, the the function at runtime. And that's what's used in Swift, um, but they've got different. That it's it's like it's at the end of this data structure. It's like they decided to bridge a C plus plus V table with an Objective C class, um, and then then that turns into Swift. Um, uh, if the type is determinable with certainty at run, at compile time, it will inline the function just like in C plus plus. And so if we go through this code, we'd find examples where we could find the function separate in the V table, and we'd find it inlined in a call. And so does it mean um, you can use all the methods from uh, the Objective-C runtime with uh, Swift objects and do all the nasty stuff with uh, like method swizzling and uh, changing ISA pointers and all that stuff also with Swift objects? So um, uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, and the, the and in fact, actually, I mean, as I, as I had shown at the beginning, the um, uh, ability to just get the type encoding of an instance variable, they just didn't bother implementing that. Um, and, uh, and part of the reason you'd imagine is, is that much like the C++ things in, in Objective-C, it gets bridged really like the type encoding mechanism doesn't even really designed to support this. Um, because it's not using the normal Objective-C uh, message send mechanism, it's using the virtual function tables, um, if you try to swizzle something, you're going to, um, it's, it's not going to actually affect the behavior. And especially, of course, if the code has been inlined, um, there would be no way of really mo making a modification to it. Um, the, uh, my hope, because I also build this thing called Substrate, which allows me to, which allows developers to make modifications to software. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that um, you can look up functions more easily, um, and then you could use the C level, like native hooking functions. It might be able to modify some V table structure. Um, but there are going to be some situations where the thing just got optimized sufficiently at compile time that the code doesn't even exist. So, so uh, it looks like there's still quite a bit of information. Um, in the binary compared to like, like I was worried they were going to strip a lot more than what Objective-C keeps. Um, what other sort of uses could you conjure up with, with that kind of information and, uh, and maybe it's worth t touching on, I think, Swift modules or something you had you'd mentioned? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. So, um, so there's still a lot of metadata available inside of inside. In fact, actually, to some extent, I think it's better, more accurate metadata than what the Objective C runtime provided. Um, uh, there were various cases with bit fields, especially where the Objective C runtime from Next was just horribly like destructive on all of the information. Um, but one thing, if you compile an application using Xcode, uh, it takes the uh, Swift module and stores in here. So like so there's this there's this like so in this here's the WDC binary and here is the here is a um, a segment which is called um, underscore underscore Swift with a section called underscore underscore AST and this this um, uh, thing like contains um, more advanced uh, class level debug information about this uh, about the um, the Swift code and I've, it, it's not actually an abstract syntax tree. It's called AST and you'd be like, oh my god, is all of my code in there and I can just decode it? it all the code isn't actually in there. I, I verified that. Um, like as far as like um, changing bodies of functions doesn't cause this, doesn't cause this block to change. Um, but I haven't, I haven't spent the time to uh, decode all the information here yet. I, I was thankful I didn't even need it. So with Objective-C, normally when you call Objective-C message send or whatever, you send a message to uh, some sort of object or whatever. And with Swift, you can still do selectors and things like that, like this thing performs selector. How does that map? Have you figured out how that maps yet? Because apparently here they don't use messages or anything like that. So if you, so uh, functions which are Objective-C compatible, and that's something where if you mark your class or mark parts of your class with, uh, with at OBJC, it'll verify and give you a compiler error if those parts of the class are not Objective-C compatible. Those do get mapped on a best effort basis to the Objective-C runtime, um, for at least read only. So you can still use OBJC MSG send um, for the things that happen to be compatible uh, on Swift objects. And, I don't, and uh, I, my understanding is um, from looking at this stuff is that it does not actually require you to use the add OBJC keyword, keyword um, in order to get that bridging. The add OBJC keyword um, constrains the bridging to make certain that it actually, uh, it actually does, like you don't screw yourself in a way.
Okay, so uh, I think we're currently out of time, but I'm happy to sit around outside and answer questions um, for however long. So.